So now we've got some beautiful Oryx in here. And look at that little avatar. I love it. Oh, just having a little bit of a rest. Having a chill out. Look how beautiful they are. They're so, um, so interesting with their horns. They're massive. Uh, but now we've got this little platform for them as well. They can climb up. And uh, none of them... Oh, one of them is enjoying it. There you go. There's one on there. Um, I realize... Oh, we've got some vet research. We'll do this first. Oh, reticulated giraffe. Oh, cool. We'll hopefully get some good uh, enrichment for them then. They got some food enrichment. Awesome. That's what we were going for. I'm actually going to cancel this now because we've got a lot of research on them. And I think we need to research one of our other animals. Um... I think probably one of the lemurs. So let's just whack uh, Beverly Ann on the black and white rough lemur. I'm also gonna go, cause I think our pygmy hippo just had a baby. Oh, we all in here. <gasps> oh, we did have a little baby. Oh, that was a cute little yawn. Look at you, little fella. Oh. Oh, son of Moto Moto gotta be a cute baby that is really adorable though look at a little face little grunts very very cute and uh is that mum gloria just enjoying a bit of a swim having a bit of a chill and uh monks and monks are just making a lot of noise <laughs> as he always does well we've got loads of research complete right we've got some more vet research complete we've got the carpies uh, I think the Akapi have had quite a lot now. Yeah, they got food level three. I think I'm going to stop them as well. I just want to kind of keep it a little bit more fair. So let's let's give it to the next, the Red Rough Lima. There we go. We'll get some more research on them because it's not just the uh, enrichment items. I know we've got quite a lot of enrichment for them already. It's uh, oh, the souvenir shops is done. Cool. Um, it's 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 also like I'm actually going to leave them to finish and do the other souvenir shop too. Um, but it, it's like the the education boost and other things that you get alongside it. And the better food is good as well. You're still stressed. Why are you still stressed? Have we um, not changed this to be... I don't think I've changed it to be one-way glass. That must be it. No, I didn't. Okay, well, we're going to change all of these to be one-way glass. And then our Nile Lechwe are going to have the best time because they're no longer going to be stressed. Now they can't see. Don't worry about it. Oh, there's one here. I missed one. There you go. Is that all of them? This one as well, yeah. There you go. Now our Nile we will no longer be stressed. What, what a journey. <laughs> um, I also realized I put all our penguins on, uh, I, I just kind of off reflex because the uh, notifications were starting to annoy me. I put all of them on contraception. The entire point of this zoo is to breed these penguins. <laughs> so that was really dumb. I'm gonna take all of our animals off contraception, um, all of the adults we have, because, oh, they've got loads of uh, like new adults. That's awesome. Um, but we shouldn't have any of them being on contraception. And when we get too many, we're just going to uh, sell some of the children when they grow up. Not sell? Oh my goodness, we're going to release some of the children when they grow up into the wild. And uh, we'll get some conservation credits from it as well. But the whole point is to uh, is to release these animals back into the wild. So I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so I've now changed all of them to be uh, off contraception. They're already... Oh, we've got, we've got so many breeding. I think... Oh no, we've got low welfare. Why is that? Let's pause. Are there too many of you in here? I thought we'd just uh, reduce the numbers. They said they're stressed. Um, I think, oh no. Okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? Social stress. Oh, they're trying to hide. It's too stressful having these around. I think that's really just because you're stood there. If you went like anywhere, like here, you wouldn't be able to see the guests. So I'm going to kind of blame that on you in this case, Kronk. I think you should just stop being a wuss and go somewhere else in the habitat. <laughs> bless he is old or she is old which one's Kronk? Kronk's the female oh she's pregnant though yeah there you go see all this nice area back here now you're not stressed you can go back up you're fine you're fine girl um tickets are underpriced underpriced okay it's gonna be 40 40 and 20 we're, we're earning good money actually i want to check our finances wow okay we're earning a lot of money Whew. This is going well. We haven't got any loans. We should probably start doing some marketing as well because we're not doing any. Um, I'm thinking maybe we should do something for families. Oh, inspectors, inspectors report. Ah, oh, nice. We're doing really well. Could do a little bit better on education, but that is always the case. Okay, so I think this is like your comedy. So the family hours, I think the middle ones all get like families in the, and the, the ones on the right probably get like teenagers in or something. 
Uh, viral videos. Okay, no. So the ones on the right are just going to be adults, I think. The ones on the left are going to be like teenagers. And the ones in the middle are going to be families. I'm going to pitch it. I'm just going to do some cereal box adverts for, um, yeah, and they can renew for families. Get some more families in here. Oh, we've had some. Oh, no. We've had a poison frog die. I think we can probably change the notifications right. So I'm going to say... I'm trying to think what these ones are. That's pregnant, and I think that must be dead. We kind of want all of these. I kind of do want these. I just don't want the maturing ones. Why are you not giving me an option here? <laughs> oh, well, it'll be fine. I'll just have to ignore them. Oh, about to mate as well. Oh, now we did get so many uh, requests for names for the Akarpis. And I think this one in particular, the female Akarpi, as we've already named the male Scotch, we had some ones I liked. We had uh, Butter was one I thought was quite funny. Um, but I have decided I'm going to name the female Akapi Hannah. And I've also got a name for their baby when they next have a baby. But um, they didn't get pregnant that time. They just mated. So we'll carry on and let you let you get pregnant again. And my plan for this side of the zoo was to continue the Africa side, but we've only got, I think, four or five uh, endangered African animals left, and they are very expensive ones, like the African lions and elephants and stuff like that, which we will be putting in the zoo. I just think we should probably build out the Asia side of the zoo a little bit more, get our zoo a little bit more established before we then bring in the big dogs, <laughs> um, because we don't quite have enough credits at the minute, and even, financial, like, even finances wise, um, it'd be a bit more of a hit than if we're just a much bigger zoo anyway. Uh, plus, we've got loads of really cool Asian animals we're going to bring in. So I think what we're going to do is uh, is take this path up this way. So if you look at the zoo from this side, we've come in, we've got our standard... Well, well I'm trying to think what they were. I think they were European animals, um, as in non-African, non-Asia animals uh, here. Then we've got our food court. Oh, the rain is making this really difficult. Um, then we had our food court and everything. And then on this side, we've come into just African animals. And then going the other way, we're just going to have Asian animals. And that's how we're going to divide our zoo up. So I'm going to just start building out this way, the little path. There we go, that's better. So now we've got it connected on a seven meter wide path, which is much easier to then, it's gonna have a lot more capacity to then continue around. And we can have another habitat right here, I think actually. Um, so I think for our next habitat, the start of the Asia side of the zoo. Oh, we've got some vet research. I'll pause for suspense. <laughs> I'll carry on with the lemurs, that's good, that's good. I don't think we're really unlocking too much at this point. There's some toys and some food enrichment. Um, we can maybe have some look at some food enrichment. Because I'm not really sure what we've got as far as for the for the lemurs. Ah, right, and we're done with that. That's amazing. We've done all the souvenir shops. So we should probably get... Uh, do we, is there anything else we need? Uh, we kind of... Well, let's just carry on with... Let's get another drink shop. And then we can do another food shop after. Um, but let's check out our lemurs very quickly and see what food enrichment they've got in here. So you have got food enrichment already. It must be... We probably already had it. So if we filter it by the, I think the black and white lemur is the first one. Let's go food. Let's go enrichment, actually. Ah, we have a new one. We ah, we already had the ice ball as maybe what was covering it and the block of ice. But we, ah, oh, and the forage box. It'll be the forage box. But we've got a small fixed roller feeder, which is really good. So, oh, look at them walking together. Must be a baby and, oh, adorable. Um, we're going to put another feeder in, though. And I think that's where they get their food. That's also where they get their food. Maybe we should have it on, like, a triangle. So we're going to be over here. They can also get some food there. There you go. Oh, about to have another baby giraffe. Oh, here we go. I know So last time so many of you were annoyed that the giraffes kind of, like, lay down to have babies. Because in real life, they just drop them from a terrifying height. <laughs> But um, oh, I think she's she's about to she's about to do it there. Um, but yeah, I think all animals do it pretty much in Planet Zoo. They like they go down and then they have the baby um, because they kind of just have to spawn anyway next to them. <laughs> so it'd be a bit weird uh, either way. There you go. Look at another. Oh, look at the sibling like all happy. Oh, a little shake. A little shake. In the, in the next episode, I'm going to do a big renaming of loads of these animals because we've got one, two, we've got three baby giraffes we need to rename. Um, we've got all our adults. Look how many giraffes you got now, Melman? Look how happy you are. 
It was just you for a while. Now we've got tons. We've got loads of lemurs. So I have taken a note of all of the names that you're putting in the comments. Um, but I'm going to do a big sweep and rename loads of them and do a little, like, a little bit of footage of each of them just to, so you know which one's yours. Um, but yeah, if you have any more name ideas, please do uh, put them in the comments because I do read them and I will be putting them into the zoo. For now, I'm going to pause the game because we want to get our next animal in and I'm going to do a joint habitat of the water, the wild water buffalo. Look how cool these are, which are endangered. And the Malayan ta uh, tapir, taper, every time. The Malayan taper, <laughs> because look at that little face and you can have, you can never have too many tapers in there. Oh my goodness. Look at the maned wolf. That's a, it's a little bit, a little bit scary. <laughs> Near threatened, but not good enough for this zoo. It's just endangered animals. So we're going to have uh, the Malayan tapir taper every time. The Malayan taper and the wild water buffalo. And I don't think, so it's one to two for these guys. They need grade three, which is wooden and above two meters. So that's fine. We can easily do that. And even if they have a couple of babies in here, they barely need any space. So we're thinking 500 um, and then the wild water buffalo. They can have, they need at least three. They can have up to 30. Wow, that's loads. Um, so we're probably going to have, I mean, 50, you know, I'd imagine a, a push. Um, then matriarchal female clans, cool, with age-based age -based dominance. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so males determine dominance by age and strength. So if you have two, if you have multiple males, there may be a little bit of conflict um, if they test the dominance by strength. And um, they're confident, but guests can't enter the habitat. So we haven't got to worry about um, them being scared. But I'm not sure if that's true for the tapirs, tapers. I'm going to say it every time. I'm going to say tapir, and then I'm going to say taper, and then everyone's happy. <laughs> um, okay, no, they're not. Uh, they're neutral about humans. They might get a little bit, a little bit weird about them. But the wild water buffalo are basically cows anyway. So, <laughs> okay, 25 years. Wow, okay. Uh, they need grade three, more than 1.25. So same requirements. And if we have... Let's say we had 50, let's say we had 20 adults at a push. We need quite a big habitat here. We're looking at 2,000, probably 2,750 would be good for both animals together. So that's kind of the number I'm going to have in mind when I start making this. And I'm going to do it on a new, uh, new set of like keepers and everything. So I'm not going to have it be really close to this keeper hut. I'm going to have another section over here somewhere. So I'm going to put the habitat gate over here on this side of the habitat. Oh, one other thing I need to think about is where the path is going to go. So we've got quite a lot of uneven terrain here, I think. I'm going to put the path out here because this is where the rest of the zoo is going to go. And I don't want it to be too uneven because I've got to think about accessibility for wheelchair access. But I don't think this is too bad um, as far as wheelchairs go. And it's kind of the best we can do without really hacking into the landscape. So I'm going to try and keep it as flat as I can without doing too much like terraforming of the land. Um, but I want this to carry on around here for our Asian section of the zoo. And we're going to we're going to make a bit of a habitat in here. Okay, so this is a massive area we've just made here. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know if this is too big, but I might want a really big herd of these actually, because I do quite like the the water buffalo. Um, the, the height of this has gone absolutely crazy though. So I am just gonna edit the barrier and uh, reduce these heights down to something that's a little bit uh, more normal without having them be uh, too different across the habitat. Um, I need to be careful on the giraffe one where they meet there. Okay, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I think maybe a couple of corners that are just a little bit too much for like that one, but you know, it's, it's not too bad. And as long as it's two meters across the hole, like at the lowest points, which it is, 
um, the door here being the lowest point. I think that's absolutely fine. Um, it also joins onto this habitat quite nicely. And I know before I separated them, uh, some habitats, but because I was, I was concerned about whether it'd be too much on the barriers, but it hasn't been as far as I'm concerned for this habitat. And we might expand this habitat out a bit and this just makes it nice and easy too. Um, so I'm gonna put some uh, one-way glass just because we might as well have one-way glass and have it on the other side. Um, because there's no point in putting in two-way glass at this point, we, especially when the, the tapers are probably going to be a little bit nervous. And then we can have this all along here be glass because there's no concerns about it. Let's have one-way glass and make sure it's all going right to left. There you go. And then probably wrap around here and have the one-way glass as well. There you go, it's on the right side. And then we can uh, we can have this path come around a little bit, but not too much. Okay, this is a massive amount of space. I think we need to get our animals now. So let's go wild water buffalo. And let's grab a few. That's a good female. Uh, that's not a good female. That's a good female. That's not the best female. Uh, that's a, okay, we've got some decent males. I'm just going to refresh the list and see if it comes up with any any better ones. Let's sort them by appeal as well. Because, you know, we want the best ones. Okay, short and longevity. As long as they're, uh, they're not ideal. I could maybe breed a few more. This might be the best. That might have been the best male. Um, I'm going to click play and see if we get any more. So I'm not wild on these females. If they got zero on anything, it's not the best. Um, and then I'm also going to get the Malayan taper. Let's sort them by appeal again. What's well, a good male? Uh, it's also a decent male, and it's all for money. So I'm going to go for this male here, and the top female. And there are two. Uh, we can probably just send all of these animals to our quarantine and then see if we get any more um, wild water buffalo. We also need to add this habitat into our staff work zone. So let's add it into zoo before we forget. Along with that education point, add that all into zoo. And then add it into a new work zone, which we're going to have here. And it's going to be called Asia Entrance. We do need to put in some staff buildings for it. So maybe for this episode, we'll just leave it open to the others, but we are going to put in another uh, area. So I'm, for now, I'm going to put this staff building in and I think uh, this is the keeper hut. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we're going to have those two buildings be in here. Um, and then, but for future, we're going to have another staff area over here somewhere, which is why that door's so far away. Um, okay, vet research is complete as well. Ah, oh, we're carrying on with our lemur research. This is all good. Maybe when we hit the second one, we'll start uh, researching the ring-tailed lemurs as well. We need, we, we could do some more research, to be honest. We have, we need to up, make sure everyone's up to date. Someone said that you can uh, highlight everyone. Wow, and then you can, you can train staff, all staff members. Let's do that. That's perfect. It's such a good feature. So yeah, if you want to train up everyone, Make sure you hit that top left icon and then uh, then train it up. And, and thank you guys. I do really appreciate when you give me tips in the comments because there's so many features that are always added and I don't know all of them. So um, I, I try and keep as up to date as I can, but it's always helpful when you give me these little hints. Look at these. How beautiful they are. Oh, we're about to have a baby taper. Oh, look at them together. Supporting each other. It, could, it probably also helps that this is the forage area. <laughs> so uh, Cusco may be helping or in true Cusco fashion, he may selfishly just be looking for food. <laughs> oh, she sat down. Here they are. I, I think they're so adorable. Baby tapers are the most adorable animals in the game, I think. They may be my favorite. Look how cute they are. Oh. Little one, little boy. Very cute, very, very cute. Let's have another look for some uh, some wild water buffalo. We've got some more, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna get this female. She's pretty decent. 
All the boys are very expensive. Um, let's get this female as well. And maybe this one. She's not too bad. Then we've got quite a few females. And if we get a good male, we can, uh, we can put them in. I don't want to spend 800 conservation credits on a male, though. <laughs> Okay, where I think they'd finished their quarantine. Yeah, so everyone's finished quarantine. So I'm actually just going to send all of them to the same habitat, which is this one. And I'm going to call it Buffalo and Tapers. I think that's how you spell Buffalo. Yeah, it is how you spell Buffalo. Very good. Very good. Oh, this ATM's broken. Okay, that's fine. Just fix it. Uh, oh, you have to request the mechanic. Okay. And vet research complete. Okay, let's move you on to the ring-tailed lemur. In that case, seeing as you're smashing through this research. And then we've got some... Oh, they're hungry. I think that's because they need keeper attention. They'll get fed, don't worry. I think maybe when our keepers are better trained up, they'll be more capable of running their zones. And we've got quite a lot of keepers, so I think it's just more of a... when In, in the future, when everyone's a bit more trained up, we can probably just rejig them a little bit. I'm going to move you onto food shops. can never have too many shops. And we can have another little section over here when we're a bit further away from this food court. I think this is them arriving. Our caretakers are all running over here. We're going to have issues with the with rubbish soon. In fact, I'm going to pause the game while we're thinking about rubbish. Let me just put in some bins and some donation boxes uh, because otherwise I will absolutely forget in some benches too. Okay, the terrain's a bit uneven along here, so we couldn't put benches up here, but if they do... If people do walk up here, then they can get there. We should probably have another way through. Oh, I think this one's a lot flatter. Yeah, okay, so this isn't too bad. So um, if they do want to get through to, to this area, this is kind of the quicker but more uneven route. But this is definitely the more like wheelchair accessible route. It's very flat along here. And uh, this is absolutely fine. So that's a much better route for them to take. And it, it, as long as we have some kind of accessibility route, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. But yeah, this is a bit of a rough and ready one. This is the one that the kids will run up and then the parents will be like, oh my God, why didn't they put in <laughs> a, a better route? Wow, look at these. Wow, these are beautiful. Look at the horns. They look amazing. So these animals actually do get a benefit. The reason I'm putting them together, if I just pause the game here, is they get a benefit from being together. So wild water buffalo, uh, we're already on them, uh, interspecies enrichment, if they're put with the Indian rhinoceros or the Malayan tapers, and vice versa with the Malayan tapers, if they're with any of these animals, they get a, they get a bonus to their enrichment. So they do like being with each other in the same habitats. So that's why they're together in this case. And look at our tapers. Look at that nose flapping around. <laughs> so this is definitely enough space for them. I, oh, they need to be added in. We need a keeper. That's so true. Okay, let's get a new keeper. Um, we're going to add them into the Asia entrance work zone. Uh, where is it? Asia entrance. There you go. Now we've got a keeper. It's part of the zoo work zone, so it should be fine. And we need to put our recently... Well, let's, let's see if we've got any new ones first. Wild wolf, water buffalo. Got any males? Not any that we can afford. We've got a massively expensive <laughs> albino one there. Okay, no. Let's just put our females into quarantine then. And then we can get them added to the habitat soon too. Because we don't want them to have fewer than three animals. Otherwise, they're going to get a little bit upset because they like to live in bigger herds. In the meantime, though, I'm going to keep it playing, but I'm going to make sure that we have enough. Oh, they need a swimming area. That's cute. Well, swimming area should perhaps be our first one. Both of them do. Wow, that's really cute. Um, I'm going to add in a little water area for them both. Okay, that's a much, that's a reasonable sized watering hole. Yeah, they're both happy with that. They didn't really need a lot, but that gives them quite a bit of space as far as water. 
Oh my goodness, I came in here to check that they could all get nourishment and look at all the levers eating. Yeah, I think it's that sometimes they run away, which is why we're getting the animal. There you go, they're dropping down now, like they're low welfare, it's because they're hungry. Um, and they haven't eaten in some of the enrichment because it's too too close to the guests. So I'm just going to move this back in here so that they can always eat there. And if they want to eat in the forage box, that's for the more adventurous ones who want to go out there. But they've got some food enrichment and they've got a normal feeding platform too. So they should be absolutely fine. We're about to have a baby... Um, baby Oryx. Is it you? Offspring imminent. Yes. This will be interesting. I have no idea what these babies are going to look like. Ooh, they're here. Is it just one? Oh, look at the little horns. Oh, that's adorable. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine giving birth to something with horns. That would just be horrific. <laughs> oh, look how cute they are, though. That's adorable. Look at them next to the long grass. They look tiny. Oh, there you go. Another little baby entered the zoo. And we've all passed quarantine over here. So let's move all of you guys into our nice big habitat over here. Oh dear, we've attracted protesters from our animal welfare. It's because they haven't eaten, so they're starving. But there is food everywhere. So I'm just gonna maybe move you. I just throw you up here and then you can maybe eat some of this, which I think is food. Do you want to eat something, little fella? Or is that just leaves? I think that might just be leaves. There must be food somewhere. Yeah, okay, it is food. Just eat. It, I'm sorry, but there's food all over this habitat. You just need to eat it. <laughs> Okay, we've got some more research for them. Got some toys and food level two. I am going to upgrade the uh, the food quality of all of our animals, actually. So let's go animals, food. Let's make... Oh, we only have base level for these, some of the new animals we've not researched very much. Grade three for our giraffes. Grade two, grade two, grade three for our carpi. Grade two, grade one, grade two... Grade two for our black and white rough lemurs now. So he's got better food quality and grade two for our dogs as well. So that's going to be a little bit more expensive, but much better for their nutritional health. Um, so that's what we want, isn't it? And we should have moved these uh, buffalo in here. So hopefully they'll be a bit happier with the, uh, the social requirements. They've still got loads of land. We've still got 6,500 meters squared. Uh, available of land, which is great. We just need to make sure that it's the right type of land now, which is what I'm going to do next. Okay, they're happy with that. They both want some hard shelter. So let's get some beds and shelters. Let's filter by the species. And we want the, I imagine the wild water buffalo are a lot bigger. So let's, let's use them. We may just go for one of these... Uh, wooden shelters. I've been trying to avoid using these because they've got the the steel. It's like a steel and wood combo. Um, I don't really want to use steel when we really don't have to. Uh, and, and there's not really any natural land formations to kind of build a cave into. So I'm going to probably use uh, some of these shelters just dotted around the habitats. So they've got some different areas to sleep in um, and they can choose whichever they want. And this might be quite a nice one. Uh, one around here because then the guests can see in but the buffalo don't know that they can And they're happy with all the requirements. Let's see if the tapers are happy too. Yes, they are I've just put in some rows here. So we've kind of got a, like a little kennel at the back and I like this because it's like they're on beams, but also the back is kind of open, so the guests can guests can see in, uh, which is pretty cool. But they've got some shelter. They don't know that the guests are there. And if we add some extra large bedding in here as well, then that's uh, just a little bit of extra comfort for them, isn't it? There we go. As, now we also critically need to check, and I should have done this first. Can anyone escape, and what areas can you reach? You can climb up there. Oh my goodness. Well, I kind of want to see that, if I'm honest. Um, but you can't escape and as can you guys. Wow. I really want to see them climb these these shelters But no one can escape which is the main thing 
So that's brilliant. Now we've got some extra wild uh, wild water buffalo. Hopefully their social group is, yeah, is 100% now. That's perfect. We've got some mechanic research complete. Got a lot of mechanics. Um, maybe I might just leave them on getting some food shops. We can get some more stuff. Uh, we could also um, put them researching, maybe staff facilities actually. Get some bigger, yeah, like the large keeper hut and the large staff room. That might be a bit more useful. Look at this herd shaping up. Can we get our mail yet? Let's let's see if we... Are there any males? No? We could buy more females, but we've probably got enough at this point to, to make a herd. Oh, it's definitely underpriced. We're going to go 42 and 21. Just going to keep upping it slowly. Um, we don't really need the money too badly. We're doing pretty well. Oh, no. An African dog's about to die of old age. They must have been must have been quite old when we got them. We only just got these guys. Oh. But, oh, the first African dog to go. Oh, no. Definitely needs to get on naming these animals then. Because... I don't think, no, they're not all that old. I think the dogs don't perhaps live as long. Look at them all sleeping in there though. That's so cute uh, because it's raining. Aww. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, once we have them, oh, I know, I know they died. I'm trying to look at the other one, the vet research. <laughs> okay, we've got some ring-tailed lemur research. That's good. Carry on, carry on. Now, I know I said I might rename a lot of animals in the next episode, but I think I might just do it now because we've got quite a lot of new animals added and we've just lost a dog with no name. So I think we should probably... Oh no, Kronk's about to die. Oh, that camera went weird. Kronk, where are you? Oh, Kronk. Kronk's been such a good mom. Oh, we can't lose you. Oh, this is going to break my heart. Oh no, is this the end for Kronk? She's nuzzling. Does that mean she's... I'm kind of expecting her to cough. Are you going to cough? Ooh, we got some... Kronk has died? Are you sure? Um, let's call the vet. Let's see what the vet makes of this. <laughs> uh, oh, if, if Kronk has gone, that's very sad. Oh no, is that her? No, she's still just nuzzling, so I'm going to let the vet deal with that. I'm going to let them pronounce any deaths. Um, we've had a lot of... There's a bit of a bit of tension in the uh, the old dog camp. Uh, someone was preventing others from breeding, which is a little bit annoying, but we can maybe get to the bottom of that in a second. I think let's give everyone a nice new name, and then everyone's going to feel a lot better about everything. Our African dogs are going to be called Zana. Our alpha female is going to be Lyra. Then we're going to have Marble. This little sleepy boy is going to be Jamie. We had a few suggestions for what the alpha should be called, but I think Ryan Reynolds was the best. Um, we've got Ryan Reynolds as the alpha male. This little sleepy boy is going to be called Leo. We're going to once again add in a solar panel because I forgot to uh, do that for the water treatment plant. So now this water is actually going to be clean, which is good because it was a bit of a cleanliness risk. Then this boy chilling over here is going to be Max. Look at his little face. And we've run out of males, but we have to have a Scooby in the uh, <laughs> in the pack. So we've got a female Scooby. And then this little rocket is going to be called Sarah. And this baby giraffe over here is going to be called Sunflower, which I thought was really cute. Then we're also going to have Bambi. And the last baby giraffe is going to be Juniper, which I thought was really adorable as well. And I believe this lechery was born in the storm. So we're going to call this one Storm, which is a great suggestion from the comments. And this little sleepy lechery baby is going to be called Katie. And this very little one is going to be Kitsune. I hope I'm saying, I'm saying that right. I'm probably not knowing me. <laughs> And this little boy is going to be called Dumpling because I thought that's hilarious and cute at the same time. So I actually think uh, for our tapers, the Malayan tapers, Butter um, is, is a really good name for the female because um, they're so chubby and Butter's a really cute name. So I'm going to name the female Butter and the male I'm going to call Mooney because they're, you know, they've got the black and white, the kind of nighttime vibes. I think that's pretty cool. And now for our wild water buffalo, we're going to have Bubby. Opal, who's having a little drink in the rain. Linda, who's just hanging out with, her, with the rest of the gals. 
Aria, I actually really like the name, so I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> and Spiffy. And for our Oryx, we're gonna have our main, uh, our alpha male be Dominic. Look at him in here in his little, his little castle. The pregnant female, we're gonna have be Killer Queen. <laughs> our other female is gonna be Ra Ra. And then our little baby, oh no, we've discovered a disease. Our little baby is gonna be April. Because they're so cute. Oh no, Ra Ra's sick. Okay, we definitely need the vet. Let's get her out. Ooh, water treatment requires repair. Is this why? Is that why they're sick? That is why they're sick. Um, because these need repairing. Are they included in their work zone? Ooh, got some vet research complete. That's good, that's good. Um, maybe move Beverly Ann onto one of the other lemurs. Uh, yeah, carry on. You go for the red rough lemur. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the work zone. Uh, let's check in zoo. It's not in there. The solar panel isn't in there. Let's add these new in as well, these two. Now they can be repaired easily. But that would be why the habitat would have been in disease risk because the water wouldn't have been cleanly. Clean wouldn't have the right cleanliness. So many need repairing. Oh my goodness. Our mechanics have just been slacking all over the place. Sorry about the uh, jumping around there. Um, oh no, about to inbreed. Don't do that. Okay, that is a sign that we need to release some of our animals. Oh no, are you... Is that one of your parents? Uh, social? No, where is it? Stud book. Parents. Okay, are you siblings? Ah, oh, you're siblings. Ah, oh, well, we're gonna have to choose one of you to release, because I don't want to put you on, um, contraceptives. So we're gonna send... Poor Pingu is gonna be sent for storage in the Trade Center. Oh, we've got lots of infertile penguins in here. I think because of their age, they're now infertile, yeah. Okay, so we need some younger adults, but we don't want them all to be siblings. I think this is the problem we have. So I'm gonna send, let's get some more penguins in. Okay, we're gonna buy one, two, we're gonna buy three females and two males. And we're going to send them into the zoo, uh, into the habitat. I'm going to put them in quarantine and then they can go into the zoo. And I hopefully, if we release Pingu into the wild. Wow, we've got 19 credits for just Pingu. Goodbye, Pingu, the first, the first penguin to be released. Um, if we release him into the wild, then the rest of them can go into quarantine. And hopefully if we add some new ones in there, they'll choose to pair up with each other. If they don't, we're going to have to get rid of some of the um, some of the other ones. But we need we need more penguins that aren't just all siblings, because otherwise we're just inbreeding them. And that's really not good. I'm also going to take our mechanic off of the research because we don't need them to be doing research. We need them to be fixing barriers right now. That's our main problem. Uh, not fixing barriers, fixing uh, facilities right now. Oh no, you spread to you as well. Okay, we definitely need the vets over here. And as we are um, adding in five new penguins, three females and two males, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna take Waddles, uh, Pancakes, and we can't get rid of the, uh, the, the Madagascar boys. Okay, so we've got two females, Tanner, and then Scamp. Oh, okay, well, let's go speedy if you're hungry. Let's release you into the wild and then you can you can feed in the wild. Um, these five penguins, these four penguins are gonna release as well. And then that should keep the numbers the same in the zoo. Oh my goodness, look how many credits we're getting for these. Wow, that's amazing. We definitely want these to be breeding. We're gonna have so many credits. Now, if we get back to our wild water buffalo and for some reason, uh, Bobby has decided they wanna be over there and the rest of them are over here. <laughs> If we, uh, if we get back to this habitat with our tapers and the buffalo, I think they all need some nicer plants. And hopefully they all like the same type. So I'm going to pause it and we're going to have a look. So you want tropical, temperate and aquatic from Asia. What do you guys want? You want grassland. So I think it's temperate. Yeah, okay, let's get rid of temperate. And we're not going to have any from grassland or temperate because they're the ones they don't share. And we're just going to have 
Asia Aquatic Tropical, which are awesome normally. <laughs> so have a look at some rocks, gonna have a look at some plants. Maybe I'll put another waterfall in just because I love them so much and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's see how these rocks look. I like that. A little bit of a waterfall, I couldn't resist. Okay, we've got about 42% coverage, which is uh, happy. The water buffalo are happy with that. And the tapers are very happy because they would have as much as possible, but they're, they're happy with that too. So it's probably a, a good balance for the two of them. And we have this nice lake out here now. And it just looks a lot more populated. Now we've got the trees. Um, we've still got quite a lot of uh, land area. Let's just see how much they can navigate still. Still got lots they can navigate, so you do have to take that into account when you're thinking about plotting the land size. It's always good to go a little bit over because you're probably going to put quite a lot of plants and rocks in and stuff, and if they can't navigate it, then it's uh, it's no good. Um, I'm also going to click on habitat, and I'm going to click on traversable area. So I want to check if they can escape now, because we put some rocks in. Uh, the water buffalo can't. Uh, they also can't climb up here anymore, which doesn't surprise me, because I was surprised that they could. Um, and the tapers. Oh, the tapers can still climb up there. So I really want to see that at some point. But um, and they can go on here as well. But they can't escape, which is the main the main thing. Um, quarantine pass, ready to leave. Ah, oh, cool. Our penguins are ready to leave. We still got a disease risk in the oryx uh, habitat. I'm not quite sure what it is. Whether it's just clean. It seems to just be that they need um, the keeper in there. But I don't really see anything wrong. The keeper's in there right now. So hopefully they'll clean that up and everything will be fine. I think we have our penguins past quarantine now. So we can probably put all of these in and move them to our penguin habitat, African penguins. And then hopefully with them in there, we'll have some new babies come in and they won't all be from the same gene pool because that'd be good. Uh, we do still need more names, so if you could, I haven't quite renamed all of the animals, we still haven't named the lemurs. If you could give me some more names in the comments, I'd be more than happy to rename the lemurs um, with some of your suggestions. We've still got some more, but I just want to make sure that everyone's, uh, everyone wants to feel like they're part of the zoo, you know? Like, I want to make sure everyone feels like they're part of it. Look at them all drinking! Oh, they're so adorable! Look at that! Look at that for a scene. Wow. Um, they do need their enrichment, actually, so we should probably... We've got these here. Let's put a scarecrow feeder in. My goodness, we've been going this long and they haven't even been fed. Let's add a scarecrow feeder there. 
Let's add another one over here, a bit further away from everyone. And let's get some barrel feeders in. I'm going to put one there because I imagine the tapers use exactly the same stuff. Um, and maybe a graze ball feeder too over here and down here. And yeah, sure. Let's put in a skittle around the back. Uh, do you want a rubbing pillar? The Scots pine doesn't really fit in. So maybe we should put a rubbing pillar in here. Uh, maybe behind the bamboo. Um, oh, that's made the terrain go a bit weird. Uh, maybe over here by the kapok. Oh, that's where the skittle is. Let's put it behind this bamboo. There you go. That's not too bad. And then a herb scent marker we can have over there. Maybe have another one down here. And some grab balls. Let's put one up there and one round here. And then let's check what the tapers have as well. Um, let's filter by, get rid of that. Let's put species and it's the Malayan taper. We've got to keep that in mind. Malayan taper, they have exactly the same except they have a forage box. Okay, so let's let's whack this somewhere where guests are going to see it. I'm actually going to move this tree uh, forward. I might move it forward and then put the forage box in here. Um, somewhere where they... There you go, that's a bit better. And let's just smooth that terrain out a little bit. Um, and make it short grass, because I've got it set on long grass, which is annoying. Because um, then the, the tamarind kind of comes out a bit of the habitat too, and that gives them that there. I just need to, because I edited the uh, habitat, I just want to make sure they're happy with the makeup still. Um, they're happy with the terrain mix. They are, that's great. Okay, let's see what else they have. Um, they got a rubber duck, sure. Let's put a rubber duck in. Can never have too many rubber ducks and um, don't really want to put the boxes in but we can put some of the balls in let's put a small ice ball in let's put a colorful ball in but let's put it around here and let's put another small ball around the back um, and a sprinkler oh yeah let's put a sprinkler in we've got not a lot up here do we so let's put a sprinkler right there now the keeper can get wet every time they come into the habitat <laughs> And then they share the rubbing post. So hopefully they're happy now. Yeah, they've got 100% enrichment. Um, got 98% hard shelter. Ooh, they've not quite got enough hard shelter for everyone. So maybe we should increase that a little bit. Let's just add another one of these in. I'm going to control X to duplicate that across. Um, put that in there. That should be fine. Oh, it's made the terrain go a little bit funny. I'm going to move that out and then just soften the terrain. Just smooth the terrain. I'm also going to put it so it doesn't auto paint. I want it to use selected and I'm going to select the short grass. Um, then let's smooth this out. I think it's the uh, it's the habitat bedding that's, that's making the terrain go a little bit weird. Um, but we can just move this tree across very slightly as well. And then move this bamboo, uh, move this banana palm over here. Um, hopefully that's enough. I think we've added quite a lot of bedding with that now. She needs to keep an eye on that though. There's 91, so we could probably have a little bit more bedding. I'm gonna duplicate it and put some over here around the back. And we got our tree there too, because that just gives them quite a lot of shelter. I'd rather they have too much than too little um, hard shelter. Let's check out how the how these guys feel about it. They're 100%. That's great. Oh, serious injury. That's not good. Um, and they are also 100%. So we've nailed the... Uh... Oh, no. Ah, oh, Cusco's... Cusco's died. I think that's both Kronk and Cusco now have died. Oh, they just had a baby. Is it just the baby on its own now? Oh, our little baby. Okay, we need to get some more tapers in. Gonna add in just one female taper because I don't want... You know when it's like, if you add a male in, is the male gonna be aggressive when there's a baby in there? You never know. Okay, we've got one female here. I'm gonna purchase her. She's only nine years old. And I think, I don't know how old our baby is. Are they one? Okay, so they're not too different in age. So this might, she might be able to be a bit of like a big sister um, to this little baby. I'm going to move her to quarantine and then maybe in the future they'd be a breeding pair. Um, we can we can see. But some solar panels need fixing. 
we we could have if if we put up like some more security, then they would be better managed. Um, I don't know what our security guard feels about their um about their workload. Uh, they're pretty happy. They're pretty happy. <laughs> I mean, very very little uh, serious issues. Oh no, but uh, King Julian is injured. That's not good. Let's get the vet in. What's happened with King Julian? Has he been fighting? Maybe. Maybe he's just had a bit of a fall. Because they do like to climb, don't they? Broken barriers? Oh my goodness, no. Where is this? Oh, this one. Right, okay. Mechanic needs to be called urgently. Where's the barrier broken? Oh, we're about to inbreed over here as well. So let's not do that. Um, let's have Katie gone contraceptive now that she's a young adult. In fact, Katie could be traded out of the zoo. I'm actually going to release her into the wild. The 16. Oh no. Oh, it's this barrier. That's the problem. Oh, that's not good, is it? Okay, I'm going to emergency capture you. And then they can move out. Stop running out. We have to emergency capture all of them. This is the problem with having barriers that back onto each other. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if we can make it work with these guys. I think it's the... Uh, this is zero as well. So we seriously need the mechanics in both. There you go. They fixed them now. Now they can move. Oh, oh my goodness. Why are you doing that, Melman? That was a bit aggressive. Is that necessary? I don't think so. Um, so now we have our barriers kind of fixed. We can we can slightly move on. But this is basically the issue: is if you have a barrier with animals on both sides, then your um it, it's going to get worn down twice as fast. So our options, we could leave it as it is and see how they go. We could upgrade it to be slightly more... Um... Melman, can you stop? What is this about? He's hungry. He's feeling a bit irritable, I think. Um, I'm going to see if we have any food enrichment for him now. Because he's been without that for a while. So maybe that's why he's... That's what has got him a bit riled up. Okay, reticulated giraffe suspended high grace feeder. This is much better. I'm going to move this one uh, to the back over here. Oh, not like that. That's a bit weird. Let's move it over here. And then we're going to have the suspended high grace feeder like this. There you go. Now it should make you happier. Okay, en enrichment's at 100% now. They're going to take all of these animals that shouldn't be there, all the giraffes, and put them back in here. And hopefully we won't have this happen again. Um, we can claim the reward for releasing two new animals into the wild. That's great. Do we have any of our females on contraceptives in here? I don't think we do. That's good. Um, should Storm be expecting offspring? Is that good? Um, stud book. Please say the parent. Oh, no, that's not good. Okay, so parent is Scoop, and she's currently breeding with Scoop. So that's going to be an inbred child that we've missed. That's not good. She does really need to be released, but I don't think we can release her. No, we can't if she's pregnant. So we have to keep an eye on that and then release her when she's had had her baby. It may just be, I think Scoop's getting quite old now. He is elderly, so he's going to die at some point. So I'm going to leave him in there. He is causing a little bit of problems because he's trying to breed with everything. That's really just for us to control, though, and us to manage. Um, thankfully, the barrier status is a bit better on this. You can also move it. So I want to go on maintenance and make the mechanic check it every three months and do the same with this barrier. So every three months, they check the barriers on these ones instead of every year, just to be just to be careful. Oh, and we have our new female um, taper for uh, to, to give a little bit of company to our baby in here. We need a name for the baby as well. So if you want to put a name in the comments, please do. And underpriced tickets, I'm going to say 44 and 22. Okay, we're about to have another Oryx. Everything is, is popping off in this zoo. But I think if we just have a moment of calm, look at our lovely waterfall. <laughs> and uh, find the herd. Where have the herd gone? Oh, look at everyone shacking up for the night. That's so cute. I think we should probably call this uh, a day on the episode with the, the tapers singing. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, if you have, please give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.